All right. Um, who's taking the kids today? All right. Well, kids can go to children's church. Kingdom kids, that's right. Kingdom kids can go into the kingdom inside. And if I can get myself unraveled here. Right. Okay. So I want to share with you guys how amazing God is. Um, but first, just a quick reminder. We have home group, in-person home group, this Wednesday night in Keyport at Anne Marie's house at 7 o'clock. So come join us. We're having a great time, guys. We're really a great time. And I know Luke and Josh are going to let us know when in January when they're going to start the young adult home group at Luke's house. So we're excited about that as well. Um, so last week I stood here and I shared with you that we are in a season of relationships and connections. Did not realize how prophetic that was. So this past week we had just an incredible blessing of serving alongside people from Keyport, Union Beach, Keensburg, and so forth for the Thanksgiving thing at the Elks Lodge in Keyport. And out of that wonderful experience, the Lord opened up doors we could have never imagined. Because on Tuesday morning, I called in to someone's office and said, you need to sit down. You guys are going to have the Elks Lodge to meet in, in Keyport. So, Basically, as of December 11th, we will be meeting and worshiping in the Elks Lodge in Keyport. Woo. Same time, same things as we normally do. Um, we will begin there. You'll be in the heat. No more cold. You'll be indoor space. And just a public service announcement, those of you that like to talk during worship, you're going to be heard because your sound will bounce off the walls. So, <laughs> but it, it's going to be awesome. And this is all because of the relationships. And the greatest thing about it all is the hall we're going to be in is right next to the Elks Lodge Bar. So guess what we get to do? Love on people. Continue to make connections. And pray for people. And invite people. And just let our, the Holy Spirit flow from what we're doing into what's going on. But the best thing is, you know, God opened this door. We didn't ask. Lord told us when I st stood here in September and told you when we were thinking of going into the school, that God said, no, I've got a place I'm preparing for you. He came through. He came through. It makes no sense back then. But he came through. So yeah, give him glory. <laughs> Lord also said, this is not the end all. This is preparation for the next thing he has for us. We're, we're, we're going to do this for at least three months, at least through the winter months. And we'll see what, what the Lord does February, March, end of February, March, and so forth, where we go from there. But we do have that starting December 11th. That's two weeks from today, guys. So we need to start spreading the word and letting everyone know what's going on. But here's the challenge. Things are going to shift. As I've been saying with our leadership team, Mark and Maddie have been doing a great job setting up the tent and preparing. Worship team has been setting up the equipment. We're going to need a hospitality team that would include setting up beyond Mark and Maddie. And I want to say a breakdown team and a cleanup crew, but this church has been really good at just everyone pitching in at the end of our family gatherings no matter what. But we still need to keep that in mind that we need to clean up afterwards, leave the place better than the way we left it. And um, definitely. If we're going to have coffee, we have to set up chairs because things aren't going to be set up for us that morning. Worship team will still set up the equipment, but I know Mark and Maddie are going to kind of be the, the heading up the sign-up sheet, a rotating sheet of people who will commit to showing up at 945 to set up chairs, to have coffee set up if we're going to do coffee, those kind of things. 
It's going to be a work in progress the first few weeks as we get uh, adjusted to how things are going to flow. Because sometimes we're going to be in the downstairs hall. But there will be that once, maybe at times twice a month, where we're going to be at an upstairs hall. Because there's two halls in it. So we're just going to flow and be thankful as we flow. But I know Mark and Maddie, start, talk to them if you are willing to commit one Sunday a month to be part of the, the setup hospitality crew. And they're going to put together a, a rotating list of people to do different things. So you can talk to them about that. But we're just really excited about what God's doing in this thing. Um, we're loving on people. We're connecting, and, and I know this is last minute, but if you're free today at 1 o'clock, right after service, they need help at the couch lodge to put the tables up they used for Thanksgiving. And you can check it out. And you can check it out. <laughs> check it out. So if you're free, they can use some manpower there. Um, woman power. And woman power, because we have some mighty woman of God here. Yeah. Women of God, yes. Yeah. Yes, we do, for sure. So... Um, yeah, it, it's really exciting. Lord, we had a, a prophetic word to us a couple of weeks ago that God's expediating things. God's going to be moving at a really fast pace. So our prayer now is, Lord, help us to move at your pace and have your vision and revelation and wisdom to move at your pace, to know what we're doing, how to move at your pace. So things are going to come at us quickly. So gear up, guys. Put your seatbelts on. It's going to be an exciting, fun ride. A um, couple of other things going on be within this whole thing is December 18, because we want to get involved in the town. We want to get involved and start ministering. The Elks is doing, uh, well, at 5 o'clock, uh, pizza with Santa Claus. Your kids are welcome to come. But guess what? Even if you don't have kids, it's about connections and relationships. Show up. Help out. Hang out. Talk to people. Smile at people. See if God highlights anyone to you. Have fun with them. So this is kind of the shift in mind frame. Because guess what? We're no longer going to be hidden in a backyard. Yeah. We are being exposed. <laughs> Therefore, it's it. now on us to expose the light and love of Jesus. So let's start Move thinking like that. Re, re, uh, train our minds and hearts to think in that attitude. That we're, it's not about being indoors. It's about who God has us to love on and flow with, and what what God has us doing. It's not about four walls. It's about what what God is doing in in this season. Right. So we just got to get ready for that. And I know December eighteenth, that Sunday morning, we're gonna have the kids involved in. Uh, Kind of a Christmas type service, but with the kids. Now, the last thing I want to say about this before we get into the message is we are not having uh, a family gathering on Christmas Day, Sunday morning, December 25th. Instead, we are going to have a Christmas Adam gathering. Adam came before Eve, so it's Christmas Adam on Friday night, December 23rd at 6 p.m. If it's possible, if that hall is available, we'll, we'll do it over there and invite the people that show up to the bar <laughs> that night to come join us. If it's not available, we'll be here at 6 o'clock on um, that Friday night, the 23rd. So I'll have more information next week. Th again, things are happened quickly and are happening fast. So we'll try to keep you up to date on all this information as the Lord is revealing what he's doing. So keep all those awesome things in prayer. If you have any questions, you can ask me afterwards. I know I'm going to meet with the worship team about their end of it later after service today. But right now, give your Bible or whatever you're using to search out Scripture, Philippians 3.3. 3. Philippians 3.3. 3. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here this morning. We just are excited about who you are and what you are doing, and we just love you, Jesus. And Jesus, would you reveal your heart to us this morning? Speak truth. Speak heavenly wisdom. 
speak love. Teach us your heart's desire that we can just simply flow with you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. New revelation be released to each one of us in this place, Jesus. Okay, Philippians 3.3 says, For we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. That's the New American Standard Version. I want to read to you the Berean Literal Bible, which is quickly becoming my new favorite version. For we are the circumcision, those worshiping in the Spirit of God and glorying in Christ Jesus and not trusting in the flesh. So I want to break this up and really kind of understand what, what Paul is saying here to the Philippian church. He's speaking over them, saying, you are the true circumcision. Now, what does that mean? We all know circumcision is the cutting of the foreskin. But that's not what it means. Circumcision, the word for circumcision. Circumcision in the Old Testament, in Hebrew, is the ones who are the true covenant with God. Ones who are in true covenant with God. Circumcision is about covenant, a covenant relationship. The ones set apart by and for God to have a deep covenant with Him. It's A covenant is more than a contract. A covenant has to do with more of a deeper, intimate level of relationship and commitment to what we're doing. So what Paul is saying is, we, for we, are the true covenant ones with God. And then he says, this is the, these are the characteristics of the ones who are in true covenant with God. I'm going to just show them to you right now. He says, for we who are the true circumcisions, the ones who are in covenant with God, this is your characteristics. You worship in spirit, you glory in Christ Jesus, and you put no confidence in the flesh. Let's look at each one of those three. So this is what defines you as the ones who are true covenant worshipers, true covenant relators with God. Worship in the Spirit of God. Worship in unity. <coughs> whether it's saying worship in the Spirit of God or those worshiping in the Spirit of God. To worship in the Spirit is unity in worship. It's unified with God. True worship is unity with God. Okay? What do I mean by that? The word for Spirit is wind, breath, or Spirit. Worship in unity with the Spirit has to do with being in tune with what the Holy Spirit's doing. It's within that covenant relationship. So this is kind of the funny thing. I've been really thinking a lot about this lately. There are so many people who want benefits of being in covenant with a church family, but don't want to be in covenant with a church family. They want the benefits of it, but don't want to be in it. You know, and then they might get frustrated or wonder why. Well, there's benefits to being a family member. There's benefits to being in covenant with God. Because you can't be an outsider and say, oh, I'm in covenant with him. No. To truly be in covenant with him, there's a connection a commitment that brings about a connection. And this connection is, first is unity in spirit. We worship in spirit. It's His Holy Spirit in us that we worship in and through. He intercedes for us. And don't mistake the word worship for just singing and worship with music. We're talking about a deep-rooted 
in connection intimately with him. That I worship him because of that. My worship, my outward worship is an outflow of my inward already connectivity and worship with him. That was such bad English. But it's an outgrowth. It's, a, it's an evidence of what's already happening inside of me because I'm connected intimately with him. So when I worship him, when tears come out, it's because I am connected in deep love with him. When I worship him and I shout and scream and celebrate, it's because I'm rejoicing with him in the spirit. When I'm groaning in intercession in my worship, it's because I am feeling what his heart feels. Because I am worshiping in the spirit of Jesus Christ. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lives in me. When I am worshiping and then I prophesy, I am worshiping out of doing exactly what Jesus did. He heard and saw what's going on in heaven, what his father was doing, and he was releasing that. So a true covenant person Worshipper within his covenant is connected in the spirit of him. It's coming alongside of what God is doing, as we always say. What is the Holy Spirit doing in this moment? And come into agreement with that. Jesus said to the woman at the well, He said, a time is coming, even now, has arrived. Right now, it has arrived. And we're seeing that. This word is for us today. Right now, it has arrived. Because we're seeing, I mean, COVID really separated people. It either expedited your relationship with God and drew you in closer or separated you. And then you clearly now see what churches have shifted into the new season God is moving in the spirit in, and those who just went back to the way things used to be. This is now. A time is coming and has now arrived when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. It's going to be real and authentic. Going through the motions, experiencing religious things, will no longer does it. Okay, And I'm not trying to put down anybody or anything. I'm just saying, the Lord is calling us deeper. And a true mark of His covenant with us is the fact that His set-apart worshipers are challenging themselves and pressing into Him deeper and deeper in His spirit. For such people, the Father seeks to be His worshipers. Those are Jesus' words. I'm going to read it again. The time is coming and even now has arrived when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be His worshipers. He's longing. He's looking for those who are willing to come alongside Him and just worship Him in spirit and truth. So true covenant, one characteristic is who worship in the Spirit of God. Not in their own spirit, not in the spirit of religion, not, oh, it's time for the doxology, so let me just sing the doxology right now. Praise God from whom all, you know. Again, I'm not putting those things down, but when they become ritualistic rather than intimate, Something is wrong. And not that you can't have intimate worship experiences in those things. For many years, I used to uh, help out when we were at St. Mary's Presbyterian Ch uh, Episcopal Church. And I, I used to help out once a month or a couple of times a month with things. The Lord rebuked me when I would say, oh, it's just so ritual. He's like, yeah, the format might be ritualistic, but why aren't you worshiping me through it? Oh, okay. So Lord, I'm pouring out my heart in you in this. And it's shifted. So whether I'm in a Lutheran, Catholic, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Baptist, doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter what they do. It matters what I am doing. Whether I'm in my home, in my car, wherever. It doesn't matter. It matters what I do. He is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit. That's one characteristic. Next characteristic, glory in Christ. That word for glory means to boast. I glory or exalt proudly. I'm bragging. I'm boasting. I'm bragging. They brag in Christ. They boast in Christ. Revealing God and boasting about God. In the way, hey, my God can heal you. My God can do this. My God is a God that overcame and is, in, is strengthening me to overcome right now. My God uh, can you know, can move mountains and my God can pray over you and we can see how he can release you and set you free and bring healing into your life physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever it might be. Everything about our lives would reflect who God is and what God can do. It's praying with authority and power. It's not saying sweet little prayers. It's calling on thunder and lightning from heaven in one way or another to shake the ground. I glory in Christ. I boast about it. Man, look what God did in my life. How exciting is this? Look who my God is. I'm not afraid. See, it's funny. Lauren and I had this conversation a couple of times because she knew about us going into the Elks Lodge. And it's not necessarily... Um, a pagan thing, but there are some things that are different. There's a bar right there. The, the head of the Elks is known as the exalted ruler. But you know what? Am I get, that's not something to be afraid of because our God is great. And the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, that's still raising people from the dead, that's lifting us up out of the pit, that's coming through us, that's healing the sick, casting out demons, all those wonderful things, is an overcoming spirit that we carry and we can boast about, because it's the spirit of Jesus, that can overcome anything and everything in that place, building. We used to say in that former building we were in, we had to battle every time we walked in on a Sunday morning because of the spirit that was there. But you know what? We're stronger today because over the past two years, the Holy Spirit has strengthened us in a way we've never been. That no matter where we are now, we, can, we have the power to consecrate that ground so that God can sanctify it. Okay? I don't care that somebody is at, sitting at a bar stool, at a bar next door, separated by one door, when holy fire comes down where we're worshiping. Because that holy fire is going to be greater than anything else. We glory in Christ. We release His power. We, we just share. This is what Paul says, 1 Corinthians 1.31. So that, just as it is written, let him who boasts, boasts in the Lord. If, you got, if you're going to brag about something, you brag about what Jesus. You brag about God. You give testimony about what God does. Galatians 6, four. But may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I get to brag about what Jesus did on the cross because the blood that was shed is a lot more than fire insurance. It's casualty insurance. It's theft insurance. It's everything insurance. He covers me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. The blood of Jesus is power. It's healing. So I get to brag and boast about that. Romans 5.17 Therefore, in Christ Jesus, I have found a reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. I have a reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. And Psalm 44, 8, and I can go on. There's many verses. I just, you know, Lord highlighted a couple to share with you this morning. In God, we have boasted all day long, and we will give thanks to your name forever. 
praising God, declaring Him. So first characteristic characteristics is that we're unified with Christ because we're worshiping in spirit. Second characteristic, we're revealing God or boasting about God because we glory in Christ. And the third, not trusting the flesh or no confidence in the flesh. Well, let's understand something. This is not the weakest of the three. Because it's a lot more than saying, oh, I just don't trust my, my flesh. It goes beyond simply denying your flesh, but it's a level of recognition of how fallible and deceitful our flesh can be apart from Christ. It's realizing that our flesh is not going to get everything right, is imperfect, but Christ is perfect. His Spirit in us is perfect. It's, it's a new level of recognition. Everything we just testified about, everything I shared about, you know, when the Lord said in September, don't go into school, I'm preparing a place. Everything I shared about uh, earlier about, uh, you know, it's a, see, Lord said it's a season of connections and relationships and we didn't know what it looked like. If I would have tried to figure that out in the flesh, it would not make sense. And we said, well, Lord, you know, it doesn't make sense, so I'm just going to do what feels right, what makes sense to my mind, what I think is going to work out. But he said, trust me. Trust me. Your flesh in and of itself is not bad. Let's not get that mistake because God works through us, right? He's talking about when we start to use our mind instead of the mind of Christ. Our attitude versus seeing things through the heart of God and the eyes of God in the Spirit. Because apart from worshiping in the Spirit and boasting about Jesus, that's what we start doing, right? The, the minute I start looking at something outside the realm of Jesus Christ. I'm in my realm. I'm now switching over to a different channel. My perception, my attitude, my thoughts, my words, my actions are all going to be different. But when I'm tuned in to the Holy Spirit, And I'm walking in the peace that passes all understanding instead of worry and stress because it does not make sense in the natural. Everything begins to flow. I'm, in, again, tuned with him. See, flesh is flesh, body, human nature, material, materiality, or... And trusting is to per, uh, urge or persuade or to have confidence in. So don't trust in that. Don't have confidence in that. And if I'm not going to trust in the flesh, who or what am I going to trust in? Well, Psalm 27 says, some boast in chariots and some boast in horses. Again, boasting, bragging about, trusting, kind of same words. But he, but we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. Psalms 3, 5, and 6. Most of us know this by heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. All your heart. And lean not on your own what? Flesh. Don't trust in the flesh. Trust in, what, in your God. Don't even try to figure out what he's doing. But trust in him, the person. That's the key. We're trusting in Him, the person. And then trust Him to figure out what He's doing. For two years, I've stood up here and said to you, I have no idea what God's doing. And even now, even more so, I have no idea what God's doing. I don't know what God's doing with our family. We're moving us to Keyport. I have no idea what God's doing with our church. 
opening this door at the Elks Lodge. All I know is this is where we're supposed to be with him right now. That's it. I wish I can give you farther vision, but I don't. All I know is this is the season we're in. This is what we're supposed to do. Let's do it. For us as a family and for us as a church family. We're just taking steps of faith, trusting him with each step. Psalm, and then it says, in all your ways, in everything you do, and how you act, your ways, how you think, how you act, how you feel, how, uh, uh, what you focus on, all those things, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Keep him in the forefront of it, of your mind. And then he will make your path straight. And what does his word also says? Your, his word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. So he'll make that path straight. And then as he reveals his word, brings revelation to his word, our path would get lit up. And we'll start. To, and we don't need to see what's a mile down the road. We need to see what the next step is sometimes. Romans 5.13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope. The God of hope fill you with his joy and peace. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. So, you know, his joy gives you strength. And his peace, the place of rest you operate in as you trust in him so that you may overflow with his hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It goes all the way back to worship God in spirit. It just goes right to that. It's a very simple word today. But how deep we take it is the challenge. The level that we take it to is the challenge. Simple. Three characteristics of those whose roots are in covenant with God. If those three characteristics are not operating together, there's something wrong, missing, disconnected with our part of our covenant with God. For the true circumcision are unified with God. They boast in God or reveal God in their lives. In everything they do, God gets credit for it. God gets testimony. God gets, you know, the, the light, the spotlight. And they trust God, remaining faithful to Him. No matter what circumstances, what situation, what is going on. Would you stand with me? Thank you, Lord. 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 Holy Spirit, just come. Just get ready to receive. Lord, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you that you initiated covenant with us because you want covenant with us. So Holy Spirit, would you bring a revelation right now within each one of us if there's any thing lacking on our part with our covenant with you, then we can simply repent, change our mind of it, lay it at your feet and get it right. Would you just bring a revelation to it right now, Lord? Thank you. We simply say we're sorry, and we simply say thank you, God, for restoring and always renewing and staying faithful to our covenant with you, Lord. Just continue to receive. I don't think this is for very many people, but uh, more joy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank yes, you, Lord. The Holy Spirit was just reminding me that when you make covenants, there is a cut and there is a sacrifice. Mm.
when you make covenant, there's a cut and there's a sacrifice. I can understand why you would want the benefits but not want to cut. I can understand that a cut, right? That doesn't sound very fun. Sounds like, uh-oh, I'm about to have to sacrifice something. So Father, if that is for anybody here or anybody online, we just pray that the fear of sacrifice would be cut away and that we could wide-eyed make the sacrifice. And I feel like um, whoever that is for, your heart is pounding in your belly, <laughs> for lack of a better term, because the Holy Spirit wants you to know that it's okay to make covenant. And it's okay to sacrifice. Mm. It's okay to give it yourself. Mm. And yeah, you might get hurt. That's part of it. You, you might. Um, but even but even in that, that there's a, a way to trust even in that. To say, Lord, even if I get hurt, I trust you in it. Mm. You know, last night when I was sharing the news with our ministry team as we prepare, what I saw and what the Holy Spirit reminded me of is when Israel, you know, we've been in the wilderness, so to speak, here as an example for the last two years. When Israel crossed over the Jordan into Canaan, they didn't immediately start conquering. They, they sat on the banks of the other side and rested. But one of the things God instructed Joshua to lead the people to do while they were there was to circumcise the entire nation because no one had been circumcised in 40 years of wandering. They had not been wandering. Uh, they had not been circumcised since they left Egypt. So they're on the banks of the Jordan on the other side. And before they even made a step into the promised land to start taking ground, Joshua consecrated the people by renewed that covenant with God through circumcision. So Father, as we enter in a new season right now, personally, individually, and as a church, we just come to you as ones who have said yes to circumcising our hearts. And I've just, right now, would you come, Holy Spirit, with your blade. Wow, oh, I feel the weight of Holy Spirit right now. And just circumcise our hearts right now, Lord. Just come, we offer ourselves to be circumcised right now. And renew that covenant with you, Jesus. Right now. This is a word for the church. God's calling us to do this. It's specific to New Jersey, but there's a lot of covenantless, covenantless people, covenantless churchgoers, mm. covenantless. Uh, yes. in, 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 in every way. And it's time for us to make covenant again. Yes. It's time for us to be people of relationship, people that will sacrifice and stay the course. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we repent as a church on behalf of other churches and other bodies for the lack of true covenant with you, Lord, and the times we have been off as a church. We, we, we just repent right now and we just consecrate ourselves. And say, come Holy Spirit. Come with your holy shears. And we make covenant with you, Jesus.
we offer ourselves, Jesus. I have nothing more to say. Just stay with the Lord till he releases you. And know that when you are released, your covenant has been renewed with him. Let him do what he needs to do in Jesus' name.